Okay, time now for my next guest who recently took a DNA test to discover he is officially 65% Irish, 35% pearly whites, but always 100% hilarious. Would you please welcome Mr. John Bishop? <laughs> Look at us, middle-aged men dressed the same. Look at us. <laughs> Aye, we're like half a tick that. <laughs> the worst <laughs> half. The two that have left. <laughs> uh, am I allowed to say welcome home? You're, you're officially 65% Irish now. It's all been explained to me. I, I went on this DNA show and I found out why I've always liked the rain. <laughs> <laughs> I've always had this hankering. I've always loved Daniel O'Donnell. When Riverdance answered, I, I knew I could see there was something Irish about me. So when it when it happened, it felt like coming home. And you've been, you see, that's how that's how you play to the crowd, folks. That's how we do it. Um, and you've also been having your own brat summer. You've been going around Ireland uh, on a motorbike. I believe. When you say you brat summer, so when you put that picture up of you before. <laughs> You did live in California, didn't you? <laughs> they must have been shocked when you walked into the water. <laughs> you were translucent in that picture. I mean, when I used to turn up at award ceremonies with the wife, right, she'd be looking you know, like California radiant. They, they genuinely thought it was make a wish. Exactly. I mean, <laughs> I mean, they, they did. <laughs> It's not, it's not a strong look, John. Yeah, yeah. I mean, but, but, but when you're going round, obviously, Ireland, uh, with, oh, with the, the glowing tan that you have. Yeah, no, I I've just, I've just did this, uh, this tour around Ireland, and I, I, I mean, I love Ireland. I've always loved Ireland, always felt at home in Ireland. But I've just passed my motorbike test. There he is. So uh, it's a proper midlife crisis. Please, so, please tip your delivery driver. Yeah. <laughs> so I did a tour around Ireland and I went the, the full, full way round. I started from Belfast, went around, did the Wild Atlantic Way. I went everywhere except Kilkenny. I can't do gigs in Kilkenny. So I went everywhere else. Uh, and you ended up uh, leading the parade down in Kerry. It did, yeah. yeah, yeah the yeah. bike parade uh, down in Killarney. There you are, raising hell. You, 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 you can tell you're not 100% Irish because, I mean, you're the only one with decent teeth there. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, to be fair... I'm speaking for myself. <laughs> to be fair, when you look at that picture, it looks like I've been superimposed onto that picture, doesn't it? Yeah, yeah. So I did, I did the Wild Atlantic Way, the whole Wild Atlantic Way, which was brilliant. But it also meant that I ended up with these, these odd gigs booked mm. in that I wasn't expecting. And, uh, and Liverpool Football Club phoned me up after we'd already organised it. And he said, uh, he said, Jürgen Klopp's going to leave. And he wants to do one more thing before he leaves. He wants to do uh, an interview at the arena in front of 10,000 fans. And he's asked, will you do the interview? And I said, I'd, I'd love to. So what's the date? He said, 28th of May. So I, I looked at me diary, I said, I think I'm in Ireland. And I said, I said, I said to Liverpool Football Club, I've got a gig in Bell Mullet. <laughs> <laughs> and Liverpool Football Club said, where the fuck is <laughs> Bell Mullet? I said, I don't know. <laughs> so I looked and then I looked at it and then I phoned me, I phoned me promoter, Brent. I said, Brent, look, this is... I've got, I've, got, I'm not, I've got this chance to interview Jürgen Klopp. How difficult will it be to move that gig in Bell Mullet? <laughs> he said, I'll phone one person in the village and he can tell everyone else. <laughs> Very good. Uh, you also had a gig in Galway, uh, where you had a special guest in the front row. Yeah, 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 Francis. Francis. Yeah, yeah. Uh, who you were a, a wee bit rude to. I, do you think so? Well, why don't let, let, let's have a look and let, let's see if we think that, that this was polite from John. Well, what's your name? Francis. Oh, very good, Francis. Who have you come with? And, and then what, what's your relationship? Daughter. Daughter, okay. She's oh, Jesus, Francis, you're 92 and you've come to my show. <laughs> Honestly, Francis, I, I am honoured that, that you would come. I am honoured. Because some of these have got loads of time left. I am not. Right. <laughs> 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 
Yeah. yeah. Well, what's wrong with that? I mean, I think that's OK. <laughs> I think that's OK. Did that go down uh, better or worse than the gigs in America? I know you've been over tour in the States as well. Well, that was good. See, but before we move off... Yeah. I did see Frances in the interval. She did come backstage. To, to be did. fair, there, there she is there. She did. So, there she is there. So, yeah. yeah. And I, I love the way you showed us the photograph, not the video, because the video under her breath, she was going, yeah, bollocks. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, no, I mean, as I say, Ireland uh, is my home, and, I, and I, I'll, I'll go anywhere in Ireland, as, apart from Kilkenny. I, uh, but I, <laughs> and, I, I, uh, and then the next thing was to go to America, and I thought, well, I'll go to America, it's an extension of Ireland, and I loved it. Well, you've gigged in America. I loved it because I loved the concept of gigging in America. The difficulty is, it's got Americans in it. <laughs> <laughs> and they just don't get everything we get. And I, I, and you know what it's like as well. As a comedian, you always have, you always have a joke in your pocket, don't you? You know, if there's a chat with the audience, you think, oh, that's good. I'll just pull that joke out. And I was doing these clubs in New York, and I came on, came on stage, got introduced, and everyone was clapping. And there was this girl in the front row clapping more than anyone else. And I said, she said, I know, they don't know who you are. I know who you are. I said, oh, I said, are you from England? She said, yeah. She said, I'm from, I'm from Manchester. So I thought, oh, I've got me joke. So I got me joke house. I said, oh, you're from Manchester. I said, yo, my wife's from Manchester and I'm from Liverpool, so our kids are mixed race. <laughs> <laughs> Which is a good joke, isn't it? In a comedy club in New York, not a titter. <laughs> Literally not a titter. And then I walked <laughs> off stage and the comp here was a big black lad from Brooklyn called Leroy. And he went, man, isn't that funny? He said, I'm a black man with a white wife. You're a white man with a black wife. I said, my wife's not black. <laughs> I said, it takes too long to explain, it doesn't matter. Uh, I know you're living in the country now. Uh, you have animals, you have kids. Who's harder to look after, the animals or, or the boys? I haven't got boys anymore. You've got men? I've got men. I've got grown men. Grown men, yeah, which is a nightmare. Because <laughs> everyone here knows they leave and then they come back. <laughs> And it's just wrong. Like, right now, I've got two fellas living in my house. And I've got to be honest, you don't look enough like me for me to feel comfortable. Because, <laughs> like, they, they, I've got two kids at home whose combined age is 58. <laughs> like, that's wrong, isn't it? It's brilliant. It's brilliant. So you, so you got the boys, and then how many animals do you have? I, you know, I don't know. Um, we've just got a couple of donkeys. We've got... We've got Three horses, a couple of Shetlands, which are like half a horse, <laughs> and, and a few dogs, chickens, uh, ducks. What's the donkeys sheep. called? Well, the, the, what's that? What? The, 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 donkeys. The, the donkeys play for you. We could. I'll take that. I'll take that. <laughs> Uh, I have to say, as heckles go, do the donkeys play for Man United? It's as good as it gets. <laughs> That's live telly for you. Well done. <laughs> OK, security, if we could just get... <laughs> um, so, so you got the donkeys. I, I love a donkey. I used to have a pet donkey. So this is... Uh, well, why did you have a pet donkey? Because cause I lived in the countryside. Look, this is, this is me with my pet donkey. Like, oh, I love this it. This is that. my uncle Anthony here, and that's me and our John, and that's Barney the donkey. But we, we, we thought we were quite nice to Barney, but, but we kept Barney out of the house. T tell us what you do with your donkeys. N I... <laughs> no, well, so what happens, we, we've got like a stable block. So when you go in, what these donkeys were, were brought to us and they'd not spent a lot of time with people. This is all my wife who's brought these donkeys. <laughs> So over Sunday, it's yeah. my job to do the yard. But yeah. they know I'm a soft touch. So when I go in to make a cup of tea, they just follow me. Because <laughs> they know I'm going to give them a biscuit, look. Yeah. <laughs> you see? That's how you can tell when John Bishop's made it. When, when his stable block looks better than my house. <laughs> 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 Yeah. Uh, 
You're coming to see us. Uh, you're going to be playing in the Three Arena. Doing on, the Three Arena, yeah. Uh, on October the 5th. Uh, tickets are available for nearly everybody apart from the United Heckler there. <laughs> Uh, he so, can come. He can come, of course he can. Tickets are available on Ticketmaster.ie. Give it up one more time for Mr. John Bisher. Yeah, I mean, I mean. And that's how you do it. Yeah. Yeah.